Um, so thank you for having us. So today we're going to talk about the uh, open SSH backdoors. So this is a, a research we did uh, for the last six months, approximately. <clears throat> uh, wait. So um, this is Hugo Porche and I am Romain Dumont. So we are working at e the antivirus ESET as malware researchers. So what we do uh, most of the time is reverse engineering uh, samples, so malwares. We also do threat hunting, and we try to uh, see the trends on the different attacks. Mm, yeah. So here's the, the agenda. So we're going to talk about the Operation Windigo a bit uh, for a context. This is how we, um, we started this, this research. Um, so we'll see how we use the attacker's knowledge to uh, gather a lot of samples on OpenSSH and have a, a good overview of the, um, the landscape of OpenSSH backdoors. <clears throat> then we'll see the common OpenSSH backdoors features, uh, so the, yeah, the common features among all these samples that we've collected. <clears throat> then we'll go a bit deeper for some open SSH backdoors that we thought were interesting. We'll talk after that uh, about the Onipod that we set up and how we um, monitor the behaviors of the attackers once they uh, infect uh, a new machine. And then we'll talk a bit about mitigation and remediation, of course. <clears throat> so in 2014, we released a paper about uh, what we call Operation Windigo. Uh, so it is still available on our blog. <clears throat> so basically, Operation Windigo was a, a very complex threat. And at its core, there was the Avery backdoor. Maybe some of you know it. Um, so Avery backdoor is basically an OpenSSH backdoor and a credential stealer. During this operation, the attackers um, um, compromise more than 40,000 servers, such as uh, kernel.org and some cPanel support servers. <clears throat> um, something that we didn't um, write about in our paper, but we talk about in different conferences, is the, the script they use for reconnaissance um, before deploying Avery. So basically, this script is a Perl script, which is piped through the SSH session. So it is not stored on the disk. Uh, the, the main purpose of this script is to um, well, gather some information, such as the Linux distribution, the OpenSSH version, um, etc. Also, the this script is used for um, log tampering, so to hide their tracks once they, they infected a machine. But the most important, the most in interesting part is the detection of already installed OpenSSH backdoors. And in this script, there are more than 47 different detections of other backdoors. So at that point, we had to look a bit more about the, the, this script. So we can argue if person tact is obfuscated by nature. But if you squint, <laughs> if you squint a bit, it may be, become human readable. <clears throat> so after having beautified the, the Perl script, um, this is a snippet of the code. So basically, some of you can recognize maybe the GS and GC command. So G stands for grep. S is for server and C for client. Um, yeah. So basically, you have like a, a pattern, and if it matches, then it will print that the um, SSHD 29, so it's the 29th signature, has been matched. So there's already a open SSH backdoor installed on the system. And the SSH underscore LS function will read the content of the the file um, where the, the credentials have been stolen by other attackers. So they were stealing already stolen credentials, which is quite clever. <clears throat> On to a more complex example, so I will not go through 
all these lines. Well, basically, uh, it will XOR uh, with a one byte, um, you can see here, Xorix uh, 23. So it will XOR the, the SSH D or, I mean, the daemon or the client and see if there are this, if this pattern matches or this one, well, it's the same. And it will print, well, the SSHD 28 signature and read the content of the already stolen uh, credentials. So here we saw that, okay, they have 47 different detections. So, and we had no idea of most of these backdoors were. And so we don't have the sample. So we, we decided to, to pivot on their knowledge and use it to our advantage. Well, to improve detections and research purposes, of course. <clears throat> so maybe some of you know Yara. So Yara is an open source tool. Uh, so it's for static analysis. So basically, we, it will try to match some strings or X encoded uh, bytecode. Uh, so it's, it's used to classify malwares and see um, diff, uh, common patterns across a lot of binaries. So we translated the Perl script into Yara and uh, applied these Yara rules against, uh, well, a lot of sources. So great success. We have more than 250 health files after filtering out some false positives and we, we group them into 21 different families. Uh, and one family is one code base, uh, like a different code base. We decided to draw a galaxy um, <laughs> uh, based on the Star Wars uh, planets. So um, the colors is the, um, the sophistication of the code. The, the planet circumference is the how many hashes of the same family that we have. So the bigger the planet is, the more ashes we have. And the, the further the planet is, the, the older it's, is its activity, uh, as we have seen. So this is just a timeline. So we released the paper in 2014, uh, created the rules in 2015. And well, in 2018, we decided to analyze all of this uh, collected data, and we published the paper in December. <clears throat> so now on to the common open stage backdoor features. So what we have seen so far is the the client and uh, daemon version of uh, open stage uh, being modified. So it's quite easy because well, open stage is open source, so you can just apply your patch. Um, most of these backdoors uh, were like credential stealer, and we will see uh, the different methods they, they use to exfiltrate these credentials. Uh, also, we have a backdoor mode, so it prevents the, the logging, um, write, writing the, the, the access on the, the file system. And in some cases, we've seen uh, code and data obfuscation, but nothing too serious. Um, okay, so credential stealing 101. Um, when I say hook, it's like it's more like modify. So did they modify a uh, route of OpenSSH functions which handle the plain text credentials? Uh, this is not an exhaustive list of all the functions that you can hook or modify, but yeah, these uh, they were the, the the most the most common. Uh, the 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 easiest way to to collect the password, it were to, uh, we've seen is the uh, local storage, so into a file. Sometimes it was encrypted or encoded, but like a one byte uh, encoding or well, nothing too serious. Um, interestingly, the SSH client is the, well, is the only way to collect SSH private keys. So here, uh, we have a, a snippet of code, so this is very basic. It's it opens a uh, user include netda.h uh, file. So they, they chose, I think, we, I think they chose that, that file to blend in with the system. 
So it really look like, looks like a, an include file. And they just, well, put the user and password they, they collected. <clears throat> we also have seen um, other methods of exfiltration. Uh, we, we've seen the HTTP protocol, so get or post request over the ATTCP. But the data was, most of the time, the, the data was encrypted with RC4 or something like that. We also seen DNS usage. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about it uh, in more details after, but basically it's like they, they put the, the data in the subdomain of the query and then uh, query a custom host. We've seen also the SMTP, uh, which is quite simple. Uh, we'll see that on the next slide. And we've also seen some custom protocols over TCP and UDP. Uh, when I say it's uh, very simple, um, so here, um, uh, this is a hard-coded password. So if it, if it doesn't match the, the input, it means that there is someone else than the attacker trying to log in. So the, they have to log in the, the passwords in, the, in this file. Um, and then they issue that command uh, to that email, Gmail address. So if you know someone who has that address, uh, <laughs> I need to send him a mail. Um, so now the backdoor mode. Um, so basically the backdoor mode, it uh, prevents the, the logging. Uh, so one, uh, once again, this is not an exhaustive list of the, all the functions that you can hook, but the, there are uh, quite a few. Um, we've seen plain text, hard-coded credentials, hashes, uh, such as bcrypt or MD5. Uh, one again, uh, once again, uh, a quick snippet. So this is just a crypt function with a salt. <clears throat> And now I will let uh, Hugo talk about the uh, more deeper analysis. <clears throat> okay, so now we have seen uh, the basic common features of the, the samples we collected. Uh, let's have a look at some more exotic and more complex families. So let's start with Camino. Um, here are the, the main features uh, for this family. Basically, it steals usernames and passwords and exfiltrates, exfiltrates them to, through HTTP requests to a CNC server. And uh, interestingly, they actually implemented um, a feature to modify, um, to update the, the CNC server hostname uh, remotely. All the exfiltrated data is XOR encrypted uh, with a randomly generated key. And this encryption, en encryption key is RSA encrypted, there is an RSA public key uh, hard-coded in the binary, and uh, the encrypted key is sent alongside the data. <clears throat> um, also, as Roman presented you before, uh, the operator can log in as root. Um, there is a password and a hard-coded uh, SSH public key uh, in the binary. And uh, as we were able to get different samples, um, we identified that each victim host is, um, is identified by a, a UID. Um, actually, the interesting point about the, this family of OpenSSH backdoor is that we were able to link it to two APT groups. So APT, I think you know uh, what, what that means. It's, uh, advanced persistent threat. And um, actually, uh, an old version of this backdoor was used by along the, the Dark Leech Apache module in 2013. And uh, more recently, Group IB published a research a few months ago in May 2018, where they described an OpenSSH backdoor matching exactly with this one. And uh, as they accepted to share their sample with us, we were able to confirm this family is operated by Carbanac, which is a, a bank-oriented APT, um, meaning targeting uh, financial institutions. Um, also, there are some particularities about this backdoor. Um, basically, it targets only the OpenSSH version 5.3, P1, for only CentOS and Red Hat, which is a quite a, an old version. 
Um, among the samples we collected, only the demon this HG was uh, backdoored. And um, actually, there, there, were, there were not a big, lot of big changes in the code. And also, the public keys remain the same across the different versions, meaning there is probably a link between those two APT groups. <clears throat> so here is a description um, of the credential stealing process. Uh, each time someone logs into the infected host, the credentials are sent to the, the CNC through the, this request. Um, and as I said before, the data is XOR encrypted and um, the, the key used to, for the encryption process is also RS encrypted. So that's all for, the, for Camino. Let, let's look to, to another family, um, KSL, which is actually one of the, the most interesting. Um, here is the, the, the main function uh, of OpenSSH for this family. And uh, hopefully the, the symbols were, were still present in the binary, so making the, the analysis uh, much, uh, much, much easier. And uh, one can see that uh, the, the first function called in the main uh, is a function named spyinit, which I'm not fa very familiar with the, the function names of the OpenSSH project, but, uh, well, this, this doesn't sound very legit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, well. <laughs> and uh, if we look at, at the code uh, of the, the spyinit function, we can see some, uh, some curious uh, symbols again, uh, spy something, spy CFG, and uh, also the call to an RC4 function, which probably decrypts the spy CFG, so meaning there is probably a configuration for the, the spy thing. And uh, if we go a little bit further, there is a, a call to a function named bot init. So a bit suspicious again. And uh, if we search for, mod bot, for more bot functions in the code, we get the following list. So definitely not legit. So I will spare you the entire analysis of the code. <laughs> Here is a, a summary of the implemented features. Basically, it steals passwords and private key finance. Um, and they exfiltrate them through many protocols depending on its configuration. Uh, the configuration is actually, so as you, as you saw before, uh, hard-coded and encrypted the binary, RC4 encrypted. And uh, one of the, the particularity of this family is the implementation of a bot feature. So meaning the backdoor can receive commands through DNS TXT records and also can create SSH tunnel between the infected host and like any host. And this last feature is particularly interesting because we found only SSH client trojanized, and this is an SSHD feature. Finally, the last but not the least, uh, there is a significant use of RC4 encryption all over the binary. Um, so Dennis, exfiltration 101, uh, Roman spoke about this um, before, but here is an illustration of the, the, DNS, uh, the, the DNS exfiltration process used by KSL. So basically the, the data, the stolen data is put into a custom structure and RC4 encrypted with a randomly generated key of four bytes and this key is sent alongside the data. Then the all is hexadecimal encoded and added um, at the, the, the beginning as a, as a subdomain of the, the CNC server. And uh, so as, the, as the, the attacker controls the authoritative DNS uh, server for the CNC, it can just unpack the, the data when the DNS query is made for, for this host. Um, so that's all for KSL. Let's move to a third one, uh, Bonadon. Um, surprisingly, the, the, this backdoor reuses the code of another family, which is publicly available. The, the code source is, is previously available, and uh, it implements really basic features like exfiltration of credentials to local file in backdoor mode, as we saw before. But what's really, sorry, what's really interesting about this family is the presence of a cryptocurrency miner and a bot module. 
So, uh, well, more exactly, the mining miner is downloaded by the backdoor. So let's start with the, the bot module. Um, basically, he checks if any crypto miner is already installed uh, on the host. The processes are just simply killed. Um, concerning the communication with the CNC, um, this is simply exo encrypted data to a UDP socket. And the communication itself is initialized by uh, a packet containing system information about the host. And uh, the backdoor can receive five different commands. So shell to create a bind shell on the infected host. Air shell to create a reverse shell to the, uh, the, the attacker machine. X to execute any shell command. Uh, Arcs to allow the attacker to update the configuration um, of the backdoor, uh, like the CNC host name or the, or the UDP port to communicate, for example. And uh, mine will download and install a cryptocurrency miner on the infected host. <coughs> um, about the, the cryptocurrency miner itself, so different versions are already compiled for each architecture and OS model on the, on the CNC server, and the one corresponding to the, um, to the system of the infected host is downloaded. Then, so the miner is dropped in as a hidden file into two different directories. And it mines Monero cryptocurrency and uses a mining pool. So unfortunately, we were not able to retrace any potential transaction. <clears throat> so that's all for this part. But well, as we are in such researchers, we did not stop there. And we set up an Anipot architecture to get up to date samples and also to check um, if the operators behind those backdoors are still active. So basically, a nipot is defined on its interaction. So here we needed something highly interactive so the attacker can install a new version of its backdoor, for example. <coughs> so we use a, a tool named MITMSSH, uh, which is open source. And um, we, we actually reused the, the backdoors we collected to leak the credentials of our nipot. So of course, we needed absolutely a client version, so the SSH uh, of the backdoor, as the nipot itself needs to remain um, clean before the attacker gets access to it. So this illustrates just what I said. So we use the backdoor OpenSSH client um, to log in on our Nipot server, which leaks the credentials, leak the credentials of our Nipot to the operator. And we just wait for the operator to log back, to log in back on the Nipot and observe his behavior. <coughs> Among the, the different backdoors we leaked the, the credentials for, um, Borea's family was actually the most profitable one. So let's start with a little sum up of the, of the features of this backdoor. Um, features are pretty basic. It steals credentials, as well as some other information, like the source IP address, the login time, etc., And exfiltrates them to a local file or UDP socket uh, to the CNC server. So as we were able to collect only the, the clients, uh, this was the perfect candidate to leak the credentials of our nipot. So we did it. And we got very interesting results from this backdoor. First, um, the operator logged in quickly enough after we leaked the credentials, only a few hours. And you store the onion router at each connection to remain anonymous, of course, and surprisingly use two different SSH clients, which is not very classic. OpenSSH, of course, but also Farnetbox, which is a plugin for Farm Manager, maybe some of, some of you know about, but this is not very common. And um, he paid also a lot of attention to remain stealthy and clean the command history at each connection. <coughs> Concerning its actions on the Onipads, he first did some basic reconnaissance as well as exfiltrate the legit SSH, SSHD, and cron binaries. Um, then he downloaded and installed a new version of his backdoor and updated the timestamps so they match the legit 
a version of the binary. And uh, finally, he downloaded also a more advanced recon script and exfiltrate all the contents of slash etc. Um, okay, so what's, what's up on Borealis? Um, plenty of things actually, the backdoor was now implemented into six different binaries, so not only SSH and SSHD, but also SSH add, SSH agent, SSH keygen, and SSH keyscan. Uh, it uses a more advanced log structure, uh, more like reports to exfiltrate the, the student credentials, and uh, an anti-logging feature um, has been implemented if the backdoor mode is used. <coughs> And uh, an interesting point is they actually implemented uh, the RC4 plus encryption algorithm, which is, the, it was the, actually the first time we saw the, this variant of uh, RC4 in an OpenSSH backdoor. Uh, I won't explain the, the detail uh, of, the, uh, of this algorithm, algorithm here, but basically two layers are added in the, to the key scheduling algorithm uh, of RC4. <coughs> And uh, it was used to encrypt um, all the, the useful strings used by the backdoor, as well as uh, all the exfiltrated data with an hard-coded RSA public key. So, as we are professional centers, <laughs> we went and think again for new samples based on the findings uh, we got from the updated, updated version of Boreas. So what we did is basically we translated the characteristics we found into a Yara rule again, and we found a new family we named Chandrila. So let's have a look at, at it. Chandrila has uh, some basic features, like uh, seeing the credentials, exfiltrating them, et cetera, et cetera. So classic, uh, the useful strings are computed at execution. There is a mistake, we do. And, but there is new stuff, and the, the backdoor can receive commands through SSH passwords. We, this is actually really powerful, and uh, this uh, illustrates the, this feature. Basically, two passwords are hard-coded in the backdoor, and if the beginning of the password processed by the SSH binary matches with one of them, the data next to the password is interpreted in two different ways. So either this is a command line to execute directly on the infected host, or an IP address to create a reverse shell to on port 80. So now we'll talk about the, the mitigation. And remediation part. <clears throat> Um, so we strongly encourage uh, a key-based authentication. Uh, one thing that we didn't talk about really is the infection vectors. Um, but yeah, most of the time, um, people, the, the, the attackers, they, they brute force, they, they, they do brute force attacks to, uh, to get in the system. So with the, a key-based uh, authentication, you can prevent that. And also, it's impossible to capture from uh, a server point of view. Um, also, the, the root logging, is, uh, you have to disable it. Uh, by default, it's already disabled now. But uh, we know that some uh, sysadmin, uh, they want to re-enable this uh, because it's uh, more convenient. So yeah, we strongly advise uh, against that. Also, we encourage the multi-factor authentication. So I know it's kind of hard to, to, to set up. Uh, these are two um, projects, but now there are more uh, tutorials online. So yeah, they, make, they made it uh, easier. Um, for, so for the detection, um, so we released some Yara rules on our GitHub. So you can, you can uh, download them and uh, run these rules against your, your system. But uh, you should be uh, warned that uh, Yara rule is the Yara is a, a static analysis tool, so it uh, it relies on pattern matching. Uh, so you don't have like uh, in memory uh, when when the the binary is is running, you don't have in memory uh, pattern matching. Also, what you can do is uh, check the binary's integrity uh, with 
uh, Debsum or APM, for example. Uh, but you should be warned also that uh, binary integrity is very hard to uh, to do because uh, this can be tampered with. Um, if an attacker modifies the, the open SSH, it means that the attacker was uh, had root access on the system. So uh, Dubsums, for example, it relies on a file on the system. So if this file is modified, then, well, Dubsums doesn't really work. Uh, also, you can download from a trusted source on a trusted system uh, the binaries and uh, compare them. Uh, you also, we also uh, advise to check the integrity of loaded libraries. Um, so I suggested uh, Avery use that technique. They, they modified the libraries were uh, loaded by uh, SSH. What you can do also is uh, check the files and socket open by open, open SSH uh, with LSOF uh, utility, for example. And you can also do monitor uh, outgoing traffic with Wireshark, for example. <clears throat> so for conclusion, uh, we don't really talk about Linux malwares, but um, there are malwares on Linux. We have less visibility because, well, the, the tools and antiviruses and are more um, developed on other environments. Uh, but as we have seen, some people, some actors, we've seen uh, the reuse of uh, publicly available and for research purposes uh, malware code being reused. But we also seen some actors um, really putting some work to, to keep their activity under the radar and do some more complex stuff. So yeah, this is a, a really... Uh, environment, uh, an ecosystem to check. So, yeah, that's it. So, questions? Uh, did you see any uh, good examples of privilege escalation, like once they've entered a honeypot? how they might elevate privileges uh, to do the binary replacements? You mean on, on the Onipod? Well, actually, um, when, we, when we use our Onipod, the, the access we, we gave what was already root, so it was not necessary. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could uh, say more about the infection uh, vectors that you were seeing, which sort of carries on from the other question. So you're saying that on the honeypot, the account that was leaked was effectively a root account, is that right? So they could then replace the binaries without any further exploits. If it was just a normal user account that was compromised, then presumably they would need some sort of local privilege escalation vulnerability on top of that in order to do the uh, binary replacements. Yeah, indeed. Yep. Precisely. Thanks. When 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 they get this when they get access to this machine, are they looking to uh, travel further from this machine to other machines that this machine knows about? Is is perhaps linked to, or are they just looking to keep this machine in their botnet? Well, actually, both, because they they want to to use their their the backdoors to pivot and then infect other servers. This was the 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 process used by Avery basically, and. Uh, but also, yes, they, they want to keep their, their, their persistence of, on their already infected servers, of course. Uh, also, there's an interesting point that uh, we set up like, the two different honeypots and uh, we leaked well, both the vectors. And uh, somehow, we, we've seen like, uh, a connection from uh, a guy and mm. a girl. And yeah, but basically, the. 
one uh, of the, the, the backdoor we leaked the credentials for, the, the operator behind, he used the, the credentials to connect to log, to log, uh, to log in on, on our you know, on our e but uh, he didn't install any backdoor, or he didn't make anything of that, but actually uh, he sold, we, this is our assumption, but we think he sold the, the credentials he, he got on, I don't know, any market, and the other one uh, was able to get, to, to buy this, uh, these credentials, and he used, he used them on the, to, to, log, uh, to log in on, on the Unipod. So this was interesting, and so maybe this is another case, uh, another use case where the the, credential, the, the operators are actually just sold the, the selling the, the credentials they, they they stole on the on the on the darknet or another place. Guys, thank you very much for sharing your research. Of the exfiltration methods that you've seen, which ones are the most popular, the most prevalent, and do you think there's anything being done to shut down those exfiltration paths? So among the, the different um, exfiltration methods, the, the most used is probably local file. This is the easiest. But maybe the second, if we, interest, if we just look at the, the network exfiltration protocols, maybe it will be HTTP. HTTP or, yeah. But yeah. Are uh, the um, infected binaries usually delivered as binaries, or are some of them compiled on the host themselves? Uh, well, uh, you said uh, they, do, uh, they do recon in the system once they infected the machine. So they grab the, the version of the open state, then they uh, upload uh, the patch and compile the machine. Well, it depends. Sometimes. 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 Yeah, actually, actually they're both. The, the both techniques are, are used. Besides mining, they try to use somehow differently CPU resources like performing DDoS or any stuff like that? Well, um, on the, the backdoors we presented here, no, but concerning Operation Windigo, yes, there were some reuse for to attack other servers to do some DDoS, etc. So well uh, it depends. It depends on the family. Uh, any more questions? At all? In that case I'd ask you to thank Roman and Hugo for their talk. Thank you. Thank you.